and then I will hand um, the word over to Anasuya, who's going to hold the listening panel. Thank you, Miga. Um, hi again, everyone. And as always, uh, you know, I keep thinking of what Paz said. Um, it would be really nice to slow down and have the time in the world to have these conversations. But again, let's take this as just one conversation in many. Um, and this process as well of the listeners as also just one way in which we bring out some of the richness of the conversations we've been having. And of course, we want to open it up for a much richer conversation of all of us in the room um, after that. Um, so just to introduce um, our listeners um, today, uh, I'm going to go from the, uh, the back of the alphabet to the front. Uh, Toma is uh, uh, a Cameroonian social scientist, biochemist and maker. In fact, uh, he runs a biohacker space in Cameroon. Um, and I know that um, many of you have been inspired by his work in writing um, in these spaces. Uh, Maya is an Indian who is currently in Berlin uh, and a researcher and educator on tech, especially ethical AI. Um, Jani is a biologist who loves nature and culture and is based right now in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, Constanza is a historian and educator uh, based in Buenos Aires and is currently at Wikimedia Argentina. Um, Asaf is a Wikimedian, structured data enthusiast, a digital librarian, a tech for public good, and a troublemaker of the best kind um, for many years that we've been making trouble together. Uh, Amanda is a professor and researcher in communication studies um, and um, at Sao Paulo, based in Sao Paulo, Brazil right now, and is of course one of our co-conspirators from Wikimovimento Brazil, um, who's been helping host uh, this conversation. And then there's Alex, a proud plant, plant parent, sociologist, research scientist uh, on Google's ethical AI team, which uh, I imagine is difficult to be on and academic in her past life. Um, so as you can see, we have a wonderful set of listeners. Uh, Asaf, I know, has asked in the chat, how long do we listeners have to uh, speak? Um, and given that uh, everyone was uh, also mid-sentence in some of their groups, let's try and I, I will try and not ask all the listeners exactly the same questions so that we can have a richness of conversation on this panel or circle and then um, have an even richer conversation with everyone else in the group. Is that okay, Asaf? Um, because I'm just looking at the time and uh, Adeli, Amiga, do we have, is it about 40 minutes for this conversation? Um, yeah, we have, we have less than that. Uh, mm -hmm. So if it would be around five each, I think we could um, do that like in 30, yeah, 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. That okay, be so, good. so so just think about five minutes each um, as as we go. But um, I might ask um, Maya to begin. Um, and Maya, just to ask you to tell us um, what were one or two interesting ideas that came up in your group and one or two of the challenges that you felt uh, to doing this work in a embodied and respectful way. Maya? Thank you so much, Anasuya. Thanks everyone um, and to the, the group as well. I'm just going to be reading from the notes that I have. So my the way that I look in terms of looking at the screen, I'm not directly looking at you. I'm looking at another um, screen actually as I talk. So uh, I'm aware that sometimes that can be disorienting on, on Zoom. Um, so, I think, of course, let me start with the challenge. Um, the challenge in a conversation like this is always like, you know, um, how do you unstructure structure? Or how do you have um, multiple different kinds of structures coexisting? There was a long silence in the beginning. And of course we were thinking, but I think we were aware, all of us, of the challenges in approaching these conversations. And um, I want to share two 
interesting points, uh, interesting to me, uh, points that came out. And um, I didn't actually check with people about attribution and names. So I'm just not going to mention people's names um, in this, but if somebody in the group wants to, wants to respond and say, yes, this was something I said, please, please let me know. Um, so one was, I think the discussion that about um, when we talk about structured data, we're often saying we want to substitute one kind of, um, one set of ontologies or vocabularies with another. And sometimes that is problematic and limiting and that's not what we necessarily want. Uh, can we think more about principles or approaches? Uh, and then we had a conversation about how sometimes even principles and approaches can act as structures. So are we perhaps thinking about activations and interfaces? And so we were having this conversation for a little while and then somebody who came into the group a little bit later uh, asked uh, an interesting question that I think is sort of provocative and there are two sides to this. She asked, what is this conversation for? Why are we having this um, conversation? And it immediately struck me as uh, a very interesting sort of slightly disruptive moment that emerged and that I want to center this as an interesting practice of saying, when somebody comes in and says, what is this conversation for? They're forcing you to reiterate why you are having the conversation and what it leads up to. And I think that is a kind of, uh, that is an approach uh, that I think we want to have to say, um, the logic of many of these systems is that we're all on the same page and we understand what it is for. But the minute somebody says, what is this for? Then we're forced to ask, look around and say, yeah, what is this for? Um, so I think that's one kind of approach. The other side of that is also a sort of urgency slash irritation and saying, okay, we want to unstructure this. What is the outcome? You know, what is this for? Let us get to a place that we want. Let us get to the place that we want to get to. Um, and and we're always having to deal with those two things of um, those two sides of what is this for? Why are we having this conversation? And I think I will probably just stop there in the interest of time. And we can always come back to this later. I really appreciate that in terms of you know just. Sometimes the, the disruptive question is actually not the disrupt. Well, it's not the disruptive question in the way we think about disruption. It's the question, it's the necessary question. Um, and I know there was a lot, uh, at least in my group, a, a bit of a struggle and, and also um, conversation again of the limitations of our own imaginations. And I'm wondering, Constanza, in your group, how, how was the imagining? Were you able to do the imagining of this, uh, this multiple worlds with uh, multiple anchors of structured data? Um, how did it feel for you? And uh, Constanza, of course, if you're uh, comfortable speak speaking in Spanish, please go ahead. Thanks. Um, muchas gracias. Eh, sí, la verdad que fue al principio un ejercicio muy dificultoso de, de salir un poco de, de las fronteras de lo que uno conoce como de datos estructurados. Nos tocó un grupo que éramos todos latinoamericanos, entonces ahí eh, nos tocó pensar un paso más atrás, ¿no? como eh, eh, pensar en la educación en datos, pensar en un contexto cultural donde eh, la, las personas que habitan y comparten datos también sean conscientes de la finalidad, del porqué, del uso, de la seguridad. Entonces, eh, se habló mucho de la democratización, ¿no? de, de pensar un, un, un espacio de, de, donde no solo sea eh, compartir información, sino también alfabetizar sobre ese uso. Eh, y nos imaginamos un, un espacio de Wikidata o de datos estructurados que tenga que eh, contextualizado, ¿no? territorial, socialmente, eh, y que pueda realmente eh, reflejar la, la diversidad de, de, de la Latinoamérica, en el caso que nos tocó, que realmente éramos eh, personas de, de todos de Latinoamérica, pero de muy distintas regiones, con realidades muy diversas, y eso también eh, nos llevaba a pensar en, bueno, cómo eh, descentralizamos cómo reestructuramos y qué queremos ¿no? de esa información. Algo que, que fue interesante también es 
pensar no solo en el compartir datos y en estructurarlos, sino en las herramientas técnicas, ¿no? Porque también se habló de nuevas estructuras de dominación. Entonces, ¿cómo desafiar esos... Eh, 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 y, y cómo evitar, ¿no? Esos espacios donde no solo compartimos información, sino que también pensamos en las herramientas más eh, técnicas que llevan a, a estructurar esos datos, ¿no? Entonces, eh, había como un, un doble sentido, ¿no? No solo el, el poner a disposición, sino ser parte eh, de esa estructura. That's really interesting, uh, and thank you, Constanza. And and um, there was a way in which this notion of education and awareness kept coming up in some of the conversations we were having. And Toma, maybe you want to talk a little bit about that and what you heard from the conversations we were in. Uh, Toma, over to you. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you so much, uh, Anna Suyas. Yes, um, in fact, we discussed a lot about uh, education, since education can be a, a very good way uh, to decolonize uh, uh, internet and uh, specifically structured data. Uh, it goes through, can you hear me? <laughs> Okay, because um, through uh, education, uh, people can really uh, adapt what they are doing. They can uh, uh, use um, uh, the knowledge they acquire through uh, the formal education to uh, put in place some specific solution and uh, to, uh, how can I say, to tackle uh, the the issue they are facing in, in uh, their context. So uh, by the way, uh, education can be uh, a good avenue for, for us to, uh, to, to include uh, or to find a good way to include uh, uh, our local knowledge, for example, um, uh, to include uh, uh, the, the wise present in uh, tales, songs, and uh, traditional knowledge, if you want. So that is what I can uh, uh, quickly say. Uh, but also, I want to 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 point the fact that internet is uh, a pharmacon, You know, is uh, it, it can be used as a, as a, a drugs, and uh, it can also be used as a, a poison at the same time. So we can uh, use internet to educate people, but internet is also a vehicle of uh, the driver of uh, colonialism and uh, other dynamics. So that we need to find a good balance and uh, be able to find a good balance need uh, educated people uh, able to bring this equilibrium to know when they are able or when they need to use uh, such knowledge for such purpose or what they don't need to eat, need it. So we need to build a critical mass of uh, people aware of such issues. So that is why uh, for me, education is an, uh, important for the formal and informal. Uh, so we need to find a good way to uh, to educate people. Thank you. Uh, I really like the the medicine or poison version of the internet, and of course, as you said, education. Recognizing that some of the ways in which we understand education itself can be very colonial, and how do we push back against that as we reimagine? Jani, how was your conversation, and what did you find surprising, interesting, what came up for you? Hi, everyone. I don't know if I can talk for, for my whole group because the discussion was really interesting from the beginning because we were talking about how the structured data needs to be something different from what is now. Then the conversation goes goes from there to we need to 
include marginalized community to make it use as well from these tools, the Wikidata. And I gave my group an um, example of some projects that we are doing here in Brazil. We are working with communities from Quilombos and indigenous communities. And we are trying to engage the teenagers to share the community heritage that because there's something that is getting lost with the time. And the discussions was going around how this example, this local example can be used as a global change at the Wikidata. So we are trying to discuss, unfortunately our time was done and we could not go on uh, more further, but we were discussing how we can use uh, how we can use oral traditions and Wikidata, how we can transform, uh, use as a uh, reliable source of information to use in another platforms. And as a form of inclusion, we need to think how those communities, how the individual from those communities can be part of the Wiki. How they how can they share something that is getting lost with the time? Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't know the answer yet, but we are thinking about really hard. And if someone of the group would like to talk about, please go on. Um, I know that Said and <laughs> Tahini has really uh, uh, another kind of discussions right now. Uh, in South America, we are more like what Constanza say, you know, we are trying to try to go, uh, try not to stop on technology barrier, barriers that we have here, because it's really different. Uh, our, Our work is really different from our discussions are really different from what they're, they're discussing there at London uh, at the United States. So please use this time to put your point of view if you like. We'll come back, Jani, to everybody in the group, but I think the point that you're making is also really important that even as we critique and reimagine recognizing that we are all having different conversations about what seems to be the same thing is really important for us in order to respect each other and the conversations and the context that we're having them in, that the con conversations and context of Argentina or Brazil is maybe different than the con context in, in the UK or, or the US. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, I want to come to Asaf because, you know, Asaf, you have been a Wikidata contributor and educator about Wikidata for a very long time. And um, we, you are also someone who thinks about multiple epistemologies in different ways. What was it that, uh, that came to you? What was it that either surprised or challenged or excited you about the conversation you were in? Uh, hello, everyone. Um... I, I have to uh, apologize. We we had uh, we took turns having audio trouble, so I missed I missed several pieces of uh, of the discussion. I'll I'll do my best. Um, I think uh, one thing that that uh, came out very clearly is the enormity of the problem uh, or the problem space and different, uh, we, we encounter it at different levels, depending on who we talk to or what the system that we are uh, dealing with is, all the way from the very first struggle of, of getting people to, to leave the matrix, if you will, to, to acknowledge that there is a problem, that there are multiple problems, and, and that to, to even begin to see the complexity, right, that is left out, that is uh, denied and erased uh, by status quo. Uh, and all the way to the very nuanced and very complex issues when people are already uh, uh, taking action, trying to um, uh, model uh, very often with the best intentions. Um, and I think uh, 
the structured data enthusiasts have uh, specifically the, the people who are versed in the technical aspects of structured data have a duty to uh, broadly welcome complexity and not recoil from it and, and seek to flatten it to our existing model, whatever it is. Precisely because we are technologists, precisely because we get it, we get how ontology works, we get how computers work, we build things, we have a duty to when we encounter something that is three three times more complex than we expected or than we designed our system for, our duty is not to say, oh, okay, let's you know flatten it to this and then it'll fit. Our duty is to say, well, we need to redesign our system. We need to dig in and, and model this in all its glorious complexity. Um, and, and in that respect, uh, Wikidata is on the I would say better end of the scale, far from perfect for sure, but because of its fundamentally open uh, ontology, because of the fundamental editability of its ontology, uh, its, its readiness to be adapted and shaped to meet uh, ever increasing um, um, complexities of things to be described. Um, one other thing um, that came up and that I think is worth mentioning is that dialogue and collaboration between stakeholders, including the non-technical stakeholders, is essential and important, and we should welcome it, but we should recognize that it's not all ideally solvable. We shouldn't pretend that if we just get together and hash this out, uh, uh, you know, it, it'll all work out. We'll find a perfect ontology. We'll reconcile everything. Uh, that is facile and false. There are, in fact, some irreconcilable drives and agendas at play and some, some circles that cannot be squared and, and shouldn't be even. Um, and we should certainly have that dialogue and seek to maximally accommodate multiple ontologies to maximally accommodate multiple use scenarios and, and uh, profiles of, of uh, consumers of uh, structured data. Uh, but we should uh, recognize that that maximum won't be 100%. Um, and, and an example of this that, that has been discussed uh, before as well is, uh, of course, indigenous knowledge and the various expectations uh, some indigenous cultures have about limiting access or about particular occasions when knowledge can be accessed uh, versus the uh, um, universalist expectation that all knowledge should fit into this encyclopedia, into this flat, um, um, universally accessible, permanently accessible uh, resource. Uh, as an example of some something that's a bit of a hard limit and a bit of a, a bit of an unsquareable uh, un unsquareable circle, yeah. Um, and one final point I'll bring up is that in terms of what we can do, um, first of all, we all agreed we should model the decolonization we want to see in the world. Uh, we should practice what we preach. We should adopt a, a can-do attitude to the formidable challenges that we see. And we should gradually deny people the excuses not to engage, right? We should gradually do this by creating and sharing educational resources, by, by providing trainings, by building software tools, so that gradually there is an ecosystem where there are no reasonable excuses not to acknowledge and represent diversity of contexts and epistemologies, right? Where it becomes no longer a, a, a defensible position um, to do that. Um, at the same time, we cannot allow the perfect to be the enemy of gradual improvement. We, we cannot demand uh, um, uh, perfect accommodation today, uh, or we can rather, but we won't get it. Uh, but at the same time, when we compromise or when we say, okay, yes, this is an improvement, we should never allow uh, the impression that, okay, today's compromise is also tomorrow's permanent solution. That's it, solved. Right, we should we should uh, very very clearly acknowledge that today's compromise is only one step one, and tomorrow we need to take step two. Um, you know, uh, I, I I joked that the the sitcom phrase "computer says no" is not a good excuse. Right, computer says no is not acceptable, even though we all 
acquiesce of necessity when we internationally travel for example we've all been there right where we're we have to to put up with uh, passport fields or, or immigration forms that have a two value gender field for example right that's that's just it there's nothing you can do about it today right now as you're flying so we put up with it of necessity uh, or we choose not to but uh, that doesn't mean we you know, we accept that that's how it's going to be forever. And, and in some uh, areas like gender, I think we can feel that the tipping point has already been reached. It's just a bureaucracy that lags behind. But we all understand that there, a day is coming when those binary fields, for example, will, will be a thing of the past. So that's, that's what I mean when I say uh, insist on change. Uh, don't accept uh, partial solutions as permanent solutions but also yeah work work uh, gradually so as not to burn out as well thank you so much asaf and i think uh two things particularly of uh the many uh, important things you said uh struck me one is the duty of care uh moving to be the duty of complexity and also the duty of messiness of being comfortable with the messiness of the world we live in because messiness is the richness and many textures of our world. Uh, thank you for that. Um, Amanda, Amiga, uh, what were some of the things that really uh, stood out for you in your conversation? And again, feel free to, to speak in Portuguese if that is most comfortable. So I will speak in Portuguese to use the incredible work of our translators. <laughs> então, vou falar em português. Uh, Todos os pontos que vocês todos pontuaram foram tocados no nosso grupo. Nós tivemos o privilégio de ser um grupo bem pequeno, com três pessoas, então pudemos discutir bastante. E acho que se eu pudesse resumir os tópicos que mais apareceram, é, seria a necessidade urgente, é, óbvia, um tanto óbvia, mas aparentemente ainda urgente, de diversificar as equipes tecnológicas, não só em visões de mundo é, diferentes, mas de disciplinas diferentes, né? A necessidade de haver cientistas humanos trabalhando com as pessoas que produzem as tecnologias. É, e, mais óbvio ainda, pessoas com diferentes visões de mundo, porque nós só conseguimos olhar para o mundo a partir da nossa própria epistemologia, da nossa própria perspectiva. Então, a gente não consegue entender... É, a gente pode tentar, obviamente, devemos tentar, mas a gente nunca vai conseguir entender a partir do ponto de vista do outro. Então, o ideal é que seja urgente a inserção de novas perspectivas e outras perspectivas, diferentes perspectivas, é, na criação, no centro da criação das tecnologias. É, e o, a, acho que também a, a necessidade de trabalharmos cada vez mais com plataformas open source, como as plataformas dos projetos Wiki, que permitam que a gente não só entenda o que está por trás do seu funcionamento, mas que a gente possa interferir nesse funcionamento, né? ainda que seja trabalhoso, mas que haja essa possibilidade, é, e enfatizar a importância da, da divulgação científica mesmo é, da tecnologia, porque o acesso à tecnologia ele ainda é muito elitista. Né? O acesso à língua inglesa, por exemplo, que é o básico para se conseguir acessar qualquer plataforma, é, é, é elitista, pelo menos do ponto de vista do Brasil. Né? As pessoas que falam inglês já são pessoas de é, uma, um conhecimento um pouco mais, é, que tiveram oportunidades de ter outros conhecimentos, né? Então, acho que a gente tem que pensar sobre isso, de como criar essa base é, do conhecimento básico para se lidar com tecnologias, seja é, na língua inglesa, a criação de plataformas em outras línguas, é, a, o acesso à, à, à educação básica para lidar com a programação e com a, as, as affordances, as, as infraestruturas das tecnologias, para que as pessoas possam, elas mesmas, pensar em alternativas, em futuros possíveis, a partir do que elas sentem necessidade quando elas usam essas tecnologias. Então, eu acho que esse foi a, as, os pontos principais que apareceram na nossa discussão. 
Thank you so much, Amanda, especially for reminding us uh, once again that even being able to have this conversation as we are is a matter of privilege, uh, right? That we are all relatively incredibly privileged in this room and just a reminder of that privilege as we think about um, ways in which to deconstruct and decenter ourselves. Um, and I'll, I'll end, I guess, with Alex, uh, last but not least, Alex, because I know that you sit straddling multiple worlds in which you think about the ethics of power and privilege and inequity um, and justice, and particularly to do with structured data and AI. So what are some of the things that you are sitting with uh, after the conversations you've been in? Yeah, thank you. And so the conversations that we had, I thought were very illustrative and thinking about the kind of things and I'll try to illuminate these, the things that really stood out for me from the prior discussions. I thought that uh, one of our group members kind of had this initial provocation, which I found to be so striking, which is sort of, what would it mean to have a kind of discussion of data without the internet? Um, and what would this look like in kind of 2040? And imbricated in that were discussions around what it means to have data, you know, for people to uh, collect, consume, or whatever in the matter of the current climate crisis. Um, the fact that we have, you know, data centers that uh, are incredibly environmentally um, taxing and wasteful, but the fact that what would it mean to sort of have a medium of data um, as, as, as this, you know, as this goes on that, you know, we are, have some, so much um, kind of differential access to um, internet as it is, but what would it mean to sort of have kind of a, a um, what would it mean for kind of our climate futures and what does that data look like? I thought that was very striking and something that I really need to sit with. Um, and it sort of actually touches on the sort of points, I think, earlier in the chat, which I, I think the chat may not go. I have to find out. I think Saeed had one you know, point about the sort of materiality of, of data, um, which I thought was striking. And so another thing that I want to highlight is the way in which um, the way we, we've been talking about stru um, um, structured data um, but also how, um, you know, that often looks like a notion of text um, or, or a set of tables, whereas, um, you know, culturally specific forms of data um, really have to depend on the medium. So that might involve things like songs, tales, artworks of different kinds, um, and how structured data can erase some of the complexities of the of those mediums. Um, I thought that was an incredibly great provocation as well. Um, and that I think is important to sit with. And I think it maybe is my own editorializing of that is that the kind of even the methods of encoding those kinds of things into the digital can, you know, themselves do a kind of a certain kind of violence to them. Um, the last thing I think I'll say um, is that there was a discussion, and I think this is related to um, um, uh, um, uh, Amanda's point, is that, you know, the, the, the necessity of, of sort of translating these aspects of data, um, of structured data across different languages, um, and, and they're not merely sort of dialect changes, but there's kind of um, huge necessities of, of translating this because we know that there's, um, you know, the sort of power uh, as, as was so eloquently put by Amanda, that is, in, that is in, in, uh, involved in being able to in, in speak English. Um, and, you know, on a computational level, um, in, even in, in kind of AI research, the vast majority of data sets are in English. Um, 
and 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 even though that you know most of the world doesn't speak English, uh, and and um, and so uh, and 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 so there's just an immense amount of, of power differential that exists there, and the way starting with data, we know that um, you know the AI systems that these data are built on, you know, fewer and fewer of them even start to consider any kind of language. I would even say, however, turning that formulation on its head a little bit, um, you might also present an opportunity to sort of contest what gets encoded in AI and whether it actually serves um, particular communities. Um, yeah, I'll stop there because I think, but these are all kind of rich things that, um, that um, folks in our group uh, uh, expressed and I think are important to sit with. Thank you so much, Alex. And, and I'm sitting with your provocation around linguality and language as a proxy for knowledge and ways of knowing and being and doing and inhabiting the world and how that um, has such implications for, for the ways in which we structure data. Um, as and also limits or, or constrains our imaginations around what could be next. Uh, I had one question for all our listeners, but I'm going to um, ask you if you can to respond to it in the chat so that uh, we go on to a more um, open discussion with everyone in the room. And the question is, if there is one practice that you feel we should be attempting to begin today, um, what would that practice be? So that we aren't in the realm of theory, but firmly grounded in practice, what would the practice be that you would like to see us embody as we continue on our journeys of decolonizing ourselves and structured data? But um, as you think about that, I'm going to hand over back to my compañera, Delhi. Uh, so that we can open this discussion up. And thank you again to all the fabulous listeners and the thoughtfulness with which you brought insights to this conversation. Gracias, obrigada, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ana Suya. Thank you, gracias and obrigada, listeners.